Hi, this is John Kenalopoulos from our center here in Athens, Greece, the Laser Vision Laboratory Surgery Center. And uh, I'm going to share with you some of uh, our uh, planning for refractive procedure here in our laser designing lab. And as you can see, we evaluate and we've discussed this many times, many of the parameters uh, involved in patient care. The first and most important, our first crossroad is to look at the epithelial maps of the patient. So we're seeing here, this is a young lady. We have relatively good epithelial maps. The cornea thickness, on the other hand, tells me that the distribution of the cornea pachymetry is relatively good. We're going to Placido disc topography that is showing, I don't know if you have a clear shot from there, that we have a little bit of truncation and there's a little bit of asymmetry. Although, and, and these are the uh, Placido rings uh, give us a clear picture that these are real data. There's little angle kappa. Of course, the main evaluation for most clinicians throughout the world, the main tool to evaluate refractive surgery patients is the FOMOPS refractive with synclic imaging, such as the Pentacam. And we, we have a very interesting article coming out with how to do on this uh, fantastic technology that has been with us since uh, 2006 and has become the uh, gold standard for evaluation of um, not only refractive surgery patients, but in our opinion, cataract surgery patients in ophthalmology in general. So we're seeing here the uh, uh, anterior sagittal curvature map, which is actually a total cornea map. It's not anterior. Remember on your pentacam, although these data here report cornea front, these are the total cornea uh, measurements uh, by subtracting from the front cornea measurements, the posterior cornea measurements. So. These should read total cornea measurements. Unfortunately, Oculus has not changed this yet. It's been almost 20 years, and it, it reports as uh, anterior cornea uh, data, but these are total cornea data, total cor cornea power here, anterior elevation here, posterior elevation maps, and the pachymetry maps. And we've talked about this uh, also in the recent ACRS meeting in Washington, D.C. This is my go-to map. These uh, escalations from thicker to thinner in any cornea, even corneas that have five diopters of astigmatism has to be, have to be round and have to be centered to the pupillary center unless there's significant angle kappa that's uh, documented in this particular pentagon by the XY axis deviation of the pupillary center to the center of the uh, cornea, which is the vertex where the image was taken. Very, very important information. This is the experience of 30 years of refractive surgery within one set of maps. So these pentacam maps are not perfect because the pachymetry maps are skewed infratemporally. The same thing happens on the left eye. There's some truncation of the astigmatism and the astigmatism is steeper in the inferior part. We can see that the cornea is steeper in its inferior and also the posterior elevation is not perfectly centered. And going back on the um, Anterior segment OCT, these are the optic view pachymetry maps. We can also see that uh, there's a little bit of blue color here in the uh, steps that the optic view device uses, and this tells us that there's a big variability of thickness that does not coincide with variability of, of thickness in the epithelium. So, take into consideration the thickness maps there, the thickness maps here on the anterior segment OCT, and we're looking at nine millimeters in both devices. The fact that we have inferior steepening, but again, remember, this could just mean significant angle kappa on the y-axis, meaning the, the uh, imaging device is looking at the cornea downwards, and this could cause fake inferior steepening. And the brilliant technology, uh, the uh, ray tracing technology by um, Alcon Wavelight, which takes the Oculus uh, Pentacom HR AXL wave device and is able to give me detailed calculated refractions um, through 2000 rays imaged uh, by from the retina to the interior uh, portion of the lens seen here with the Hartman Shack uh, wavefront maps and from the uh, sign fluke imaging device, which is a Pentacam HR here in this particular sitemap device to the anterior side, uh, part of the lens again uh, and also calculate tilt and we can see here the uh, wavefront uh, summary and the uh, 
Pentacam Total Cornea Power Summary. This is the same patient. We're seeing that the sitemap device uses a three model um, eye, three dimensional eye for each eye it evaluates based on the actual length measurements by the interferometry device that's embedded in this three uh, level device. So it's one machine that takes Hartman Shack um, wavefront images, the interferometry images that me measures each anatomic uh, step within the eye. We can see the hyper reflectivity from the uh, uh, RP of the cornea. And uh, also, actually, the, this is the inner uh, surface of the cornea, the uh, interferometry. It would have been the RP of the cornea if we were looking at um, uh, ultrasound uh, measurements of the length of the eye. And again, we're seeing that these are good pentacam maps because we have good exposure of the whole cornea. And uh, these are this is the uh, vertical scientific image uh, documenting that there's no eyelids in the image. So these are um, acceptable and well-documented images with this device as well. So in this particular patient, this is a 30-year-old female in Greece. Uh, we decided for minus two dabs of myopia to go with PRK uh, in lieu of that one in 10 patients in Greece has documented keratoconus when we look at our cataract patients uh, over the last five years. And the fact that it's low myopia, this looks a little bit suspicious. This looks a little suspicious. And the fact that in the... Um, uh, OCT derived um, maps, uh, the thickness is not well centered and has multiple steps. Again, um, makes us uh, consider that she would probably do better with um, PRK. But in essence, this is the strategy. Uh, this is the cockpit of uh, deciding of the procedure that we will do. And you saw that I'm spending probably more time than the procedure itself. And this is the important thing for patients to have this ability of evaluating every aspect of these diagnostics and using your knowledge and your experience into applying them to the best possible procedure for the patient. The procedure itself to treating this right eye of this patient will probably take us three minutes. Um, and again, I thank you very much for um, uh, coming into our uh, design uh, uh, Center for Refractive Surgery here in Athens, Greece, and uh, uh, I'm really glad I could share this with you. This is John Kanlopoulos from Athens, Greece, signing off. Thank you for you.